Hello and welcome guys, I'm Excessive Brutality and this is Excessive Gamer bringing you my favorite 5 games so far. This is not my favorite 2016 games, these are my favorite 5 games currently ever. Number 5 is Layers of Fear by Blooper Team. Uh, despite what the reviews have said, and you all know what I think about those reviews because I've done, I've done a rants video on that before. I find this one to be an absolute fucking gem. For a psychological horror game which really draws you in with a decent story and uh, scares that really do make your heart pound against your ribcage and I'm serious here, right? They use the same scares sometimes over and over, fair enough. But they do work, they do work, don't get me wrong man, they really do actually scare you man. Don't care what anybody else says, this fucking mic has pissed me off. You know, make your own mind up, check it out, try it out, it really does deserve, deserve your attention. The game soundtrack is spot on, the atmosphere is fucking electric. The narrator is believable and super fucking creepy. The story, disturbing, okay? What is there not to like a creepy fucking mansion, okay? Creepy mansion, a narrator whose fucking voice just fucking makes your fucking hair stand on end. Oh man, what do you want me to say? Layers of fear, definitely worth your time. Number four came as a surprise to me, guys. Uh, Ratchet and Clank by Insomnia Games. This was such a fucking surprise. Although I don't uh, find Clank's uh, levels in the games the least bit interesting. They were quite boring, but they were very short. This one's such a breath of fresh air, man. The nonsense weapons, <laughs> the wacky enemies, the amazing setting, the humor. The graphics are fucking amazing. Seriously, when they say, everybody's been saying this, so this is cliche, you've already heard it before, the graphics are pretty much on par with any Pixar movie. Uh, so, it's like you're actually, you know, playing a movie. This game is one that I completed about four times, <laughs> and it's, it's very easy to get into, it's easy to pick up, very easy to drop off and come back into it. You don't really have that sense where you need uh, continuation. You can just pop in anytime. Uh, it just doesn't get boring. You know, the array of weapons which are fucking mental, the, the crazy weapons, that fucking pixelator is just amazing. That's my favorite weapon, pixelator. Uh, uh, the level design is just insane. <laughs> There's just so much stuff happening all the time in this game that you just can't get bored. It's just impossible. I love it. My son loves it too. Number three, guys. Uncharted 4. My beloved series, Uncharted. I love it so much. I've been... Um, as soon, actually, the story, I, when I got my PlayStation 3, which was um, about, you know, halfway down the, the life of the PlayStation 3, uh, the first game I got, and I was told by my cousin to get Uncharted 1 and 2, and he told me, uh, make sure that you play Uncharted 2 first, because Uncharted 1 is already aging, and it's, it's showing, it's showing its age, and, you know, you probably won't like it as much, so play Uncharted 2 first, which I did, and I fucking fell in love with the characters. Um, so I played Uncharted 2 and then I went back and played Uncharted 1, the original, and I loved it. I loved it so much. I loved it so much. I hated the fact that I started on 2 and then went back to 1 instead of doing 1 and 2 in sequence. Regardless, we're talking about Uncharted 4 now and it's great to see Nate again, Elena, and not to mention Sully, one of my favorite characters. Sully is just an amazing guy. You want him to be your grandfather. Although I think introducing a new character, though uh, at this point it's a bit late in the series, I don't think it harmed it one bit though. Uh, Drake is a little older and dare I say maybe even a little bit wiser but let's not go too far there. Uh, the characters are really what Naughty Dog do best and I'm just at all with the series. Um, I'm happy with how it ended, I thought it was a really good ending. <laughs> uh, I, I like that they left it open for maybe uh, more Uncharted in the future with uh, the daughter as the main character, which I mean I think that's excellent. So number two guys. The Witcher 3. Fuck me, CD Projekt Red really got it right with this one. Great story, guys. Great story. Uh, this is my first The Witcher. I've not played The Witcher, the original one, or The Witcher 2. I've never played those before. I came in straight uh, off the bat with this one. Uh, I came in I came in as a complete and utter noob. I didn't know anything about The Witcher, but I found the story was amazing. And uh, for a change, it's nice to have a big game like this. An open world map where the side quests are actually decent. Uh, I enjoyed loads of side quests. Fair enough, you do get this one. Uh, you have to go kill these five and then come back and you have to go over there and kill five of those. And then you always get those in these kind of games. That's fine. But there were very decent side quests. And um, 
and uh, you know they would some of them were linked to to other quests and uh, there was like a chain of quests and, and it, they were always really fun this game came with a heap of extra side quests uh, characters that are great and believable uh, as believable as it can be in this world but uh, believable regardless and this world was fucking very much alive at least it felt very alive to me and for my number one game of all time and I'm pretty sure loads of you would agree with this it's gonna be the last of us and again by Naughty Dog because Naughty Dog are just the best fucking developers out there right now the last of us what can I say the story is just insanely good the amazing characters Ellie and Joel Wow God Almighty man they feel like a family I can't play this game without really feeling like I really don't want them to get hurt. Never in any game, not even in Uncharted, have I ever felt this connection with game characters. For fuck's sake, these things are polygons and pixels and fucking vertices and fucking texture maps. But they're so real to anybody who's ever played Last of Us. Ellie is like your little sister and Joel is like, for me it would be a brother, for you it might be a father figure, he's just they are amazing characters and you want to see you want you want them you want the best for them so you know the fact that Ellie at the end you picked it up a bit and started helping out and she became this much tougher kid who could you know handle herself in this in this manic crazy world where you're never safe from harm every corner you turn there's there's something there to get you or or there's someone there ready to shoot you or you know it's fucked up the world the story, the atmosphere, the character, the character build up, the music is unforgettable, it is just ingrained into me now. So whenever you hear that melody, it's just it takes you straight back, straight back to that world. So Last of Us is my all-time favorite game. I doubt that anything will ever kick it off its pedestal, to be honest with you. Maybe The Last of Us too. But maybe not. <laughs> not sure yet. Anyway, guys, those are my five favorite games of all time at the end of 2016. So uh, thanks for joining me, guys. I'm Excessive Brutality. This is Excessive Gamer. Please leave a comment down below and let me know what your five favorite games are. Say, tell me what you think about my list as well. Uh, it would be nice to hear from you guys. Thank you. Till next time.